Good morning. I apologize for running a, a shade behind. I, I, I forgot to pick up the microphone and, and whatnot, so you're going to have a wire hanging out and everything. So, But it's, it's good to see you all this morning. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, welcome to uh, folks who haven't been back for a while, but we're thankful to see you. And uh, for those of you who are watching online, welcome. We're hoping that you are as blessed today uh, to be in the presence of the Lord wherever you are as we are here this morning. Um, you know, this coming year, we, we've got some things uh, about Genesis House. If you would like to, uh, if you're one of your church groups would like to serve at the Genesis House and get on that schedule, uh, let me know. Just get a, um, we serve on the third Thursday of, of every month. So if your group would like to be a part of that. Right now, they're just dropping off the food and, um, and then they are serving themselves at it. But uh, if you'd like to be on that schedule, just, just let us know. Uh, and we've got youth this evening in the men's class meeting on Wednesday night uh, and all kinds of stuff. And, and I promise, folks, that I will not speak for 40 minutes today. <laughs> I was waiting for that. You know, last week I got into a little bit of what I call preaching, teaching, and, and it just went on and on and on, and I was like, I had no idea until somebody came up, and, and I looked in online on Monday, and I'm saying, oh my goodness, but um, I promise to be a, 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 a little more brief today. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord God, fill us with your spirit and not with a consciousness of time. For if we can learn more about you in 41 minutes, then Lord, please fill us. But Lord, I pray that your spirit would fill us right now today wherever we are, whatever we do, so that we may know your love and know the promise of the hope you give us in Jesus, your Son. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love you too, John. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't resist. You teed that one up. Yeah, I know you do. I'll get it back. Good morning. So good to see all of you and all of you who are watching in online. Let us stand. Won't you stand at home and worship with us? Two, three, four. <coughs>
Heavenly Father, we worship you here this morning. We lift you up, for you are worthy and we are unworthy. Father, we look to the cross where you gave all for us, and we thank you and we praise you. And in this time that we have together, Father, let us open our hearts and our minds and let us hear what you have to say for us today. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. You may be seated. And as we have gathered in the presence of our Lord, it is good and right for us to gather in a, uh, a posture of prayer. A time when we come to open our hearts to God, to seek God's forgiveness, to be thankful for what God has done, is doing, and will do in our lives. So let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, we gather in your presence today, sinners one and all. Not one of us able on our own to remedy our sin, to eliminate our sin. And so, Lord, we confess our sin to you, our sins of thought, words, and deeds, sins against our brothers and sisters, sins against our Savior, sins against you, God. So I pray, Lord, that we would each one open our hearts to you. And even though you're a God of full awareness, that we would open our hearts and say, Lord, forgive me. For every vile thought, every hateful word, every harmful deed. And each one of us, Lord, can account for a time when we've harbored those thoughts, accomplished those deeds, and spoken those words. Forgive us. And Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. As men, women, and children gather today in whatever form, whatever fashion, whatever place to worship you. And that's the key, Lord, to worship you. to take away our thoughts of self and focus upon you. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for this freedom. For those who struggle in this earthly environment because they don't have that freedom. I pray, Lord, continue to bless their struggle. Continue, Lord, to lead them by your Spirit wherever they are. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for every blessing that you bestow upon us, for the offering that has been received this morning. Lord, we're thankful. And we pray that it would be anointed by your Spirit and used with this church within and beyond so that others may know the goodness of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, be with those who have endured this illness, especially those who have endured the loss of loved ones because of it. Comfort them, Lord. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with your presence so that they would know they're not alone, that you are there, and in you there is hope through faith 
Strengthen their faith by your Holy Spirit. Strengthen their faith, Lord, with the words of your Son, Jesus. And may we never, ever stop saying thank you for Jesus who walked upon this earth as a man and as the revelation of you, God, yourself to us in full humanity and full divinity. Thank you. And Lord, we pray that you would be with Mary Alice in these days to come. Strengthen Larry with her. We give you praise, Lord, for little Scarlet, for a successful surgery. And we thank you, Lord, for surgeons and doctors that could make it possible for, for her to go home and play that very day. For Jordan Sharp, we lift him up to you, Lord, or her. Um, we ask you, Lord, to bless them, keep them, whatever their case might need. For you know what is necessary beyond our knowledge. And so, Lord, we pray, be in Jordan's life at this time. For everyone in our lives, Lord, that we know needs prayers, be with Guy and Rachel. We hold them up to you, Lord. And anyone else in our family that needs your prayers, that needs our prayers, they need your hand to be upon them. And for that, we're thankful, Lord, to know that you are going to be there. You are already there and always there. Thank you. And Lord, as one body, one voice, one mind, we lift our voices to you, Lord, and pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I don't see any kids here with us today, but, you know, we might have some kids at home. And so I want to talk with the kids for a minute about what it means to be strong, strength. You know, we all are strong in some form or some way, aren't we? Sure we are. What are some ways that you can get stronger? Well, we can lift weights. A lot of times when we put 10 pounds on the side of a bar and 10 pounds on the other side of the bar and we're lifting 20 pounds of weight, that's getting stronger and stronger as we lift. Well, we can do exercises. Exercises tone up our muscles and they make it possible for us to get stronger, to endure longer. We can run. Oh, what better way to strengthen those leg muscles than to run and run and run and run and run. I used to be able to do that. But you know, kids, that's about our physical body. That's about our physical muscles. Well, what about our spiritual muscles? What about our faith? How do we get stronger in our faith? Well, there's a couple of ways. First, pray. Bow your head and talk to God. That's what praying is. It's a conversation with God. But it involves listening as much and even more than talking. So we can pray and become stronger spiritual people. We can read God's Word, the Bible. How many of you have Bibles? If you don't, maybe you can ask mom or dad to, to get you a Bible. There's all kinds of good kids' Bibles out there. And you could read in the Bible about Noah, about Abraham, oh, about Jonah. I really like Jonah. Um, you know, all of the disciples, man, and about Jesus. He's the most important person in the Bible. But we can do that and become stronger in our faith as we learn the lessons that God gives us. So yeah, exercise and, and lift weights and run for your spiritual, physical strength, but for your spiritual strength, pray and read the good news of God. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Can I pray with you right now? Lord, I pray for each child looking in, no matter how old or young they might be. I pray, Lord, that they would find strength and faith to get through every day, even the bad days. Thank you, God, for loving us so, for giving us Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Our scripture for this morning is taken from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. It is not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead 
and calls into being things that were not. Again, all hope, against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb had also been dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. And this is why it was credited to him as righteousness, The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins, and he was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, upon these words, may your spirit fall and may your spirit work so that all who hear would hear through your spirit the truth that you have delivered from so long ago to even today. And may I be your humble servant to deliver only that truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Like many of you, like all of you, when I was a little boy, I learned my ABCs. And you know, when you were a kid, we... We think that the ABCs, the alphabet, has got certain letters like elemental P. You know, that's, that's one long letter. But, uh, you know, that's, every kid seems to think that that's just one letter. But every letter, every letter has importance. And the letter H is important. If you say the the sound of H. What is the sound of H? Right? It's an expression of breath. And when God used that letter H, His breath was expressed. His breath was poured out. And God's breath is the Holy Spirit. And so when we look at the letter H and what God has been doing and and stuff, uh, we can see that it's important. And and letters are important, and we're going to get into that a little bit more today. But to illustrate how, how important letters are, okay, how they can change the meaning of a word or the meaning of a sentence. I just want you to know, here's, here's a typo that was found in a church bulletin. It had an announcement. Ushers will eat latecomers. It's amazing what the absence of a little s is. You know, the the true thing was for those who didn't get that, ushers will seat latecomers. I mean, you know, it it sure would make you think twice about being late, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, but you see, letters are so important. And and you look up on the screen, you say, well, there's Abram and Sarai. Abram. Oh, he was was an amazing man. And uh, he lived a long, long, long time ago. But he had this wanderlust. He, he, he would get up and, and go in a, in a moment. 
What would it take? And I have to ask you this question. What would it take for you to uproot your family, to cast aside your job, your business, and to, to pick up stakes and move across country? Knowing that you don't have anybody over there, knowing that there is no job waiting for you, knowing that there is no home waiting for you, what would it take for you to pull up stakes and move? Mm. Well, one day, Abram's father, Terah, came in and said, we're moving, pack up. And they did. They were going to go to Canaan. Now, in the ancient Middle East, they didn't go on a straight line. You know that straight line thing, as close as between two points is a straight line. Well, they didn't go a straight line because that would have taken them right through the Arabian Desert. And nobody wants to take their family and, and all of their belongings and their herds and, 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 and house people across that desert. So what they did is they went north. And they went through what is known as the Fertile Crescent. They stayed in the, the good lands, so to speak. But, but they got up to a point and they said, that's far enough. And they set down stakes. It's kind of like us going to Minnesota and stopping and saying, okay, this is where we're going to be. And that's what they did. About halfway there, they stopped in this place called Heron. And they, they set down stakes and they, they built a home. And Terah died there. Abram's father, Terah, died there. He had lived to be 205 years old. But he didn't die in his homeland, and he didn't die into the destination where he was heading. He died halfway there. Now, it might mean to say, oh, well, we just, we're just going to make this our home. This is where we are. Our patriarch is buried here, and this is where we're going to stay. But, oh, that's not the case. After Terah's death, God spoke to Abram and said, Go. I want you to go from your country where you are now in Haran. I want you to go to an unknown place. Go, and I'll tell you when you get there. Now, isn't that the deal? Yeah. <laughs> Well, can you imagine the conversation that Abram and Sarai had that, that evening? Honey, get packing. We're moving again. Oh, where to this time? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, really? Yep. And when we get to wherever we're going, I will become a great nation. And my name will be greatly known and respected. Really? And how will we get well, that's the good part. Jehovah's going to take care of us. Oh, and you know this. How? He told me so. This Jehovah voice says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So let's go, honey. Let's get packing. We're burning daylight. I think that would have been an interesting conversation to listen in on. 
But Abram had been called by God to leave his new homeland and with his wife Sarai to go to a mystery land. A land that only God knew. A land that God would give them. And throughout his time following God, Abram was faithful. And he did prosper. And why did Abram prosper? It was not through obedience to a law or anything because no law had been given. God had not delivered the law of Moses because Moses hadn't even been born. But Abram was just faithful to what God had said, to what God had promised. Abram was just looking and taking God for his word. Abram and his family prospered because they trusted. They trusted in the promise that God had given him. Go, and I will make you a great nation. Go, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Go, and I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will also curse. Not just some people, but all people. Go, Abram, go. And Abram believed and he trusted in what God said and he picked up his household, wife and all, and went. Yet Abram was in conflict. His name meant something, just as Sarai's did. Abram's name meant exalted father. Father of high places, a man lifted up, lifted up by whom? By his sons, by his daughters, lifted up, exalted father, father of high places. That's what exalted means. And yet, Abram had no children. Can you imagine Abram as he goes out and, is he, he, and people want to know, well, what's your name? Abram. Oh, you're an exalted father. You're a father of many. Huh? How many children do you have? None. Wow, that's not very exalted, is it? No. But you know, names meant something back then. And Sarai, she was a beautiful woman. Even in her advanced years, she was so beautiful that the pharaohs of Egypt coveted her. In fact, one of them even took her into his harem. But when he learned the truth that she was actually Abram's wife, and that all kinds of bad things, plagues and whatnot were happening in Egypt, he sent her back. And he said, take her back, take her back. But her name meant princess. Oh, and I'm sure she was as beautiful as she was. But by just adding the, word, the letter H, into the names. Abram became Abraham. When God breathed God's spirit into Abram, it became Abraham. And Sarai became Sarah. And the name changed. Father of a multitude, father of nations became Abram's name, and a noble woman. 
not just a princess, but a noble woman became Sarah. Sarah became Sarah, a noble woman. And it was the noble woman who would give birth to Isaac, the son. Yeah. Through Abraham and through Sarah, the nations would be born. The nations of believers in God the Father would come into being. And the kings of those nations would come as the descendants of Sarah and Abraham. But it took their submittal. They had to submit themselves to God for this to happen. And that meant, yes, picking up and going twice. That meant believing in the promises that God made numerous times. Oh, and God is still making us promises for sure each and every day. Do we believe in those promises? I hope and I pray that we do. Because those promises tell us of things that are to come. They don't talk about fate. F-A-I-T. It's, it's a French word. And it talks about things that have already come to be. <laughs> It's foggy outside. That is not something that is in the future, but it is actually happening right now. That's what fate is. It is what is presently. However, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It's amazing what that one little letter H does. It changes a word of what things that are already in place and makes them into things that are yet to be. It changes the name. It changes the meaning. It changes our perspective on things. It was Abraham's obedience in God's promises, in God's words. It was Abraham's belief in those promises, in those words that made him righteous, that made him faithful. And God delivered on those promises. And God did make him the father of nations, a great nation, Israel. Now, we as Christians can even trace our lineage back to Abraham. Abraham is part of our lineage as well. We can say that, yes, he was the father of many nations. He was a father of Christianity as well. Because all Christian believers have Abraham in their line. We do. It may not be in our hereditary line, but it is, Abraham is in our spiritual line. We can walk our faith all the way back to Abraham's faith, to Abraham's believing. We, Christian people of faith, we are those who believe in the promises of God to reckon all of us to righteousness. A righteousness that comes not from obeying a law, 
but a righteousness that comes to us through faith in Jesus Christ. A belief in the things to come that haven't already been, that aren't already now, but in things that we do not see because they are tomorrow or in the eternal after. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 tells us that He, Jesus, was delivered over to death for our sins. And He was raised to life for our justification. It's impossible for any one of us to be good enough to overcome our own sin, to save ourselves through our own righteous acts or obedience. Those impossible things for us are left up to, to the Lord God Almighty, who is the God of all possibilities and who has promised. Even from the casting out of Adam and Eve from the garden, God said, I will make a way. I will redeem you. I will take you back. He made a promise. And God delivers. God delivered on that promise through Jesus Christ our Lord, a man who lived upon this earth, fully human and fully divine, the only Redeemer that we could know. God supplied. And Jesus died upon a cross to bear our sins so that we might know the fullness of His forgiveness by grace through faith alone. May God Himself, the God of all peace, sanctify each and every one of you, each and every one of us, through and through. For only God can do that in Christ Jesus. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you are called by God. Each and every one of us is called by God just as Abraham was. Each and every one of us is called by God to live blamelessly, to walk in righteousness, to be holy as God our Father is holy. And I know, I know that I can't. But I know that when I walk with Jesus, when I walk with my Lord, even my broken nature, is restored. My imperfections are made whole. And I am thankful for that, for there is nothing I can do in my life to set it straight. And we are all the same way. Absolutely, we are all in the same boat. So I say believe in God. Believe also in Jesus Christ. Put your hope in Christ. No matter what's going on in your circumstance right now, 
look to tomorrow with confidence and hope that God will sustain you. When sickness comes, and we've all experienced some sickness in this time, believe that Jesus, when Jesus says, I am the Lord, and I'm with thee. Believe in the Lord that heals. When jobs are lost, and plenty of them have been lost, remember, God will never leave you or forsake you. And when tragedy strikes, God is present. Regardless of whether that tragedy is, is from a natural disaster or from human error, Whatever it might be, God is there. God is present. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Wow. I can believe in that. I can have faith in that. I can find hope in that. You see, faith with the huh at the end. Faith is not blind hope or a wish like the world has. Faith is knowing that there's a firm foundation in God who has been made known to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't have an anonymous God. We don't have an unreachable, unattainable God because God has given Himself to us in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, who came down from heaven, was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, not for the benefit of God, but for the benefit of you and me. And I believe in that. I have faith in that. And my hope is found in that. And because I have hope, because we have hope, because we have faith in those things, we know that God is present. We know that babies come off of heart and lung machines and can run around as if there's nothing wrong. Even to celebrate her first haircut this week. We know that people are saved. even when they make such grave mistakes. Cancers are healed. And survivors are found everywhere. And for that we can say praise God. So hold on to your hope. Your hope, your spiritual hope. Hold on to your faith. <sighs> Feed your hunger and rejoice in the harvest, for God is there. Listen to the <sighs> Spirit of God in your life and in your heart today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your, your Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. Fill our hunger. Show us the harvest that we might be the harvesters And thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word and your promises fulfilled. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
Won't you stand, please? Thank you for being here today and, and thank you for watching in. As you go forth, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Depart in that peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and have a blessed Sunday.